Uh, now, I had a, I had a poll, or I guess a, a question of which book should I go verse by verse through uh, out of Daniel and Hebrews. Now, everybody chose Hebrews. I, I even had people uh, that watched the ministry online calling me and emailing me about they, that they wanted to see Hebrews. So Hebrews is going to be the one we go through. So go to uh, Hebrews chapter 1. And uh, we've done a verse-by-verse -verse study through Romans and also through uh, the book of Acts. And I figured that Hebrews would be the one that people want because it's a book that most people tie us into because they put us under the new covenant, right? So, uh, and it's a book that's going to be, we're going to have some fun. There's going to be a lot of meat and a lot of things in here. So uh, just continue to stay with us and we're going to do this every Sunday. We're going to go verse by verse through this book because a lot of times this will give us some understanding of Israel's future program better to understand our program because most people that you talk to are going to go to Hebrews for their doctrine. Okay? So, so that's what we're going to do. Now, the reason that people go to Hebrews is because there's a controversy of who wrote this book. Did Paul write this book or did he not write the book? Right? Now, Hebrews 1 and 1, let's go there. Before we get into any doctrine of the book of Hebrews, I'm going to explain this controversy. Now, the first word in Hebrews 1 and 1 says what? God. It says God, right? So now, who wrote the book? God. God wrote the book, right? Now, every other book of your Bible is written by, uh, is named after the author who penned it. Okay? Now, the book of Hebrews is the beginning of Israel's program as it pertained back here in the book of Acts. That last year of restitution. We're going to get in that as we get through the verses. But, they, but I want you to understand something. Me personally, I don't believe Paul wrote this book. Now, again, this is not something to be dogmatic about or to get into something about with people. Why? But first of all, God didn't let us know who wrote it. So anything outside of that is a speculation, right? Because since there's no clear view, now I'm going to give you some scriptures as to why I th think Paul did not write this book. One being the writer of this book includes himself in the doctrine. Included in the Hebrews doctrine as we go through it is the possibility of losing your salvation, right? So Paul understood he couldn't lose his salvation, so he could not be added into this doctrine. The writer adds himself in this doctrine, right? Now, also, every book that Paul wrote, he actually penned them, and, and it starts with Paul. Go to 2 Thessalonians real quick. 2 Thessalonians, look at chapter number 3, and look at verse 17. Because there are some people who believe, some, I've talked to other grace preachers who believe that Paul wrote Hebrews. I'm going to show you why they believe that. And again, if they, at least, as long as they understand that the doctrine in Hebrews is not talking to us, then that's okay. We all listen to Les a lot, and he's been back and forth on this issue. He yeah. not believe that he did write it, but for a long time he said no way. And yeah. He used mm -hmm. proofs and stuff. Yeah, and, and again, a person like Les, I would uh, uh, go back and forth with because Les understands that the doctrine is not Amen. talking to us. Amen. You see that? And again, we don't know who wrote this book other than God wrote it. Okay? And the book like that Paul wrote, his book start with I, Paul. Yeah, exactly. All of them. And I want to show you here in Scripture. Exactly. Uh, look at 2 Thessalonians 3. Look at verse 17. The salutation of Paul with mine own hand, which is the token in every epistle, so I what? Right. So his name is on what? Every epistle that he writes. Right now, we know Turtleus, not Turtleus, but uh, uh, somebody wrote Romans for Paul, uh, but he signed it, okay? So every epistle that Paul wrote, he signed his name to it, which means Hebrews does not have his name on it. So either God didn't want us to know or Paul is lying. And if Paul is lying about that, then he's lying about a whole lot of stuff. Jeez. Okay? So, so again, uh, uh, now, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter number 3.
Look at verse 5. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 5. Paul is talking about himself and those who uh, were ministers with him. He says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of who? Uh -huh. Who has also made us able ministers of the what? Now, the New Testament has to deal with what? Israel. The new covenant, their program, yeah. right? That's the New Testament has to deal with them and their new covenant. Paul says he's an able minister of that covenant, mm -hmm. which means that he would have known the doctrine of Hebrews to write it. Right? That's what he said. He would have known that. So it's a possibility that he could have written it. Right? Because he would have known about their new covenant. Because remember now, before Paul became the apostle to the Gentiles, he was taught by Gamaliel, who was a teacher and student and a, doc a doctor of the law. So he would have known, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, uh, Philippians 3, so he would have known their doctrine. And the fact that God had given him this grace message, he would have known their new covenant and what it consisted of. You see that? So he would have known. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says that it says that uh, the writer of Hebrews traveled with Paul. I mean, traveled with Timothy. And if you know, Timothy was a known associate of Paul. So they use that to say because the writer of Hebrews traveled with Timothy, that it must have been Paul who wrote the book. But just like you and I, that just like I'm your pastor, I'm pretty sure you talk to other pastors. You go, you hang with other people who go to other churches. It doesn't mean Timothy wasn't all but just he had to travel with Paul. He couldn't travel with anybody. You see? So, so go back to Hebrews 1 and 1. Again, I just wanted to settle that issue. I personally believe, because Paul says in every epistle he writes his name, I don't believe he wrote Hebrews. Now, if somebody comes to me and says, like Les, that he's pointed out, says that I believe he did, then listen, as long as we know that this doctrine isn't to us, that's good. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Okay? But the most important thing is that whether Paul wrote it or not, God didn't want us to know. Right? But what God did want us to know is that this doctrine does not apply to the body of Christ. So that's all that really matters. Okay? I just wanted to go through that because people have a hard time understanding who wrote Hebrews. Now, again, I have what I believe according to the scriptures I just gave, but you be fully persuaded in your own mind. Who is the us in, in, in that verse we just left? Uh, it, I, at that time, it was, probably was Apollos, Barnabas, uh, Barnabas those who, would, who were part of the kingdom church who would have known about this also. So that's that's the us that were there. I personally believe Barnabas wrote it because he, uh, he was a Levite, first of all, and I think he studied with Paul with Gamaliel. So he could have knew that doctrine as well. So he's yeah. a good candidate for it. Yeah, and again, everything after, because it says God, everything after that is a speculation. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, there's, you know, there, I, I've heard a lot of things about who wrote the book and all those things. And again, those are speculations. Those are speculations because God didn't want us to know. That's the bottom line. That's right. He didn't want us to know. And now, so let's get into the document. Uh, God, who at sundry times, what does sundry mean? Various. Means. Various, right? Various times and in diverse or various manners, spake in where? Time past. Time past now, according, I'm sorry, unto the fathers by who? The prophets. By the prophets. Had in these last days spoken unto us by his who? Son. Now. For those of us who understand the doctrine of grace, time past is a significant time, right? What is time past? Back here, under this dispensation, right? So we understand that the writer of Hebrews, whoever it may be, it's, we're going to say it's God, at sundry times or at various times, we know God talks to men different ways at different times, right? So at sundry times and in diverse manners, he spake in time past unto the fathers, by the prophets. Who would have been the fathers? Abraham, Abraham, Abraham Isaac, Moses. Jacob, the patriarchs, right? Yeah. They would have been the 12 sons of, uh, of Israel. They would have been the patriarchs or the fathers, right? So God spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Okay? Now, the prophets here start when? Uh, that's what I mean. You talked about that. I don't uh, know how you want to do that, though. The prophets start with Samuel. 
Yeah. And I'm going to show you the scripture as to why. But understand what this doctrine is starting off with is something that began to be spoken back here. Mm -hmm. Okay? Back here. Now, go to uh, <laughs> Acts. Go to Acts chapter 3. Go to Acts chapter 3. So we know that this doctrine starts off in time past being spoken unto the fathers by prophets. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because in Israel's program, who came first? Apostles or prophets? Prophets. Prophets came first. In our program, who came first? Apostles. The apostles. Right? Because Paul was first. Okay? Look at Acts chapter 3. Look at verse 8. Start at verse 18. We're going to get to 24. But let's start at 18. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should, should suffer, he had so what? Fulfilled. Fulfilled. So this is Peter talking now. Uh, uh, he's talking to Israel in the time after Acts 2 in the day of Pentecost. He's talking to them about the things that God had showed by the mouth of the prophets how that Christ must suffer. So they should have known according to the Old Testament scriptures, Isaiah 53 being one of the main ones, that he had to what? Suffer. Okay, look at verse 19. Because of this, Peter is preaching, repent ye therefore and be converted. Now, repent means to change your mind. Because remember now, they had crucified the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Change your mind about who he is. Repent. Be, and, excuse me. And then be converted that your sins may be blotted out when? The, time the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right? Understand that our sins are already forgiven. Amen. We're not waiting for Christ to come back. Amen. Romans 5 and 11 says we now receive the atonement. Mm -hmm. Okay? So right here, Peter is saying you need to change your mind about who the Messiah is. So when he comes mm -hmm. and he gives us the new covenant, which we will write the law in our hearts, at that time he will take away our sins. Mm -hmm. We're not waiting for the presence of the Lord in order for our sins to be forgiven. Right? We already have our sins forgiven. Different dispensation. Look at verse 20. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was what? Preached unto you. He was preached unto you. Back here in the earthly ministry. And the prophets, he was preached unto you. He's going to send it back. That's what he said. Whom the heaven must receive until, which is a what? Time. A time word. The times of restitution of all things. What's restitution? Huh? Okay. To bring back or to restore, right? So Jesus in John 14, he says, uh, I must go to prepare a place for you that where I go, you cannot go. He's up there preparing the place in my father's house of many mansions, the scripture that they, everybody reads at a funeral. It has nothing to do with us today, right? So now he's going to prepare a place for them. Because remember that the place that he's preparing in Revelation 21 is going to come down to them. We, when we die, our kingdom and our eternity is up. We're not looking for heaven to come to earth. That's this program. We're looking to go to heaven. That's our final resting place. Right? Which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since what? The world began. Since the world began, there was a doctrine being preached that had to do with this earthly kingdom. Paul in Romans 16, 25, he says, for, uh, for, uh, 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 for according to my gospel, the, I have the power to establish you according to my gospel, uh, uh, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. So there was a doctrine that was being taught since the world began by the mouth of all its holy prophets. And then there was a doctrine that was kept secret since the world began. That's what you need to rightly divide. But understand the writer in Hebrews talks about the doctrine that had been spoken what since the world began. So that means the writer in Hebrews is picking up what this people over here left off, which has nothing to do with our dispensation today. Okay? Look at verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye do what? 
Hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. This is talking about Deuteronomy 18. We went over this last week, right? Look at verse 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Look at verse 24. Yea, and all the prophets from who? Samuel. So it starts at really Samuel because Samuel was the one but when they had the judges and all those things that began to set up, God called Samuel. Samuel was the one to anoint David and anoint Saul as king. Okay? So understand that, that, that Peter is telling us now because he's giving us a little further revelation. He says that the prophets start from where? Samuel and those that follow after. As many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these what? Foretold of these days, right? Now, go to Isaiah chapter 2 real quick, because Peter is quoting here. So the writer in Hebrews, when he speaks about something being spoken unto the fathers by the prophets, and in these last days, he's talking about a doctrine that was preached since the world began. But we know our doctrine today has been kept secret since the world began and revealed unto Paul. Because remember now, those last days, because when we did the eschatology, uh, right the dividing eschatology, and we talked about that, we did a couple studies on that, we were talking about the last days and what they mean. Right? The last days, but Paul is going to talk about the last days mm. for the body of Christ. But Paul is, the, when Paul mentions last days, he's not talking about these last days. Mm. Right? Because there's a last days to our program too, because our program is different than theirs. Yeah. And we're going to go over that. Look at Isaiah 2, look at verse 1. The word that Isaiah, Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now, Judah and Jerusalem. Now, remember, remember now, we're discussing the book of Hebrews. It should be blatantly obvious based on the title of the book as to who the audience is. Right? Yeah. Hebrews. That means it's talking to Hebrew people. Now remember, Israel is their nationality. Jew is their religion. Hebrew is their tongue or their race. You see that? So understand the Hebrews or the book of Hebrews is talking to the Hebrew people. I mean, it doesn't get any plainer than that. Okay? So now, in some of your Bibles, even this Bible that I have, it says Paul, the, the book of Hebrews written by Paul. So that's what a lot of people get that also. So, but, but understand, Judah and Jerusalem represent this program, right? Judah is the place, Jerusalem is the place, Judah is the, the people there. Uh, and look at verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the what? In the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains, because mountains and scripture represent kingdoms, right? But so the Lord's mountain or kingdom shall be what? on top of these other mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall do what? Flow into it. That's out here. And many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of who? Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his paths, for out of Zion shall go forth the what? Uh oh. And the word of the Lord from what? Jerusalem. So what happens is Peter is talking about something in Acts 3 that was preached since the world began, which we now know the writer of Hebrews when he speaks about the last days. He's talking about these events that was prophesied way back in Isaiah. And these last days, what's going to happen is that they're going to have to go up to the Lord's house and go to Jacob. To find that God, because God is only going to be dealing with the nation of Israel. That's right. So the Gentiles, they're going to be ruling and reigning over the Gentile nations, but all the nations are going to have to go up to go up to that mountain, right? Literally. Literally, Literally, right? And so what happens is, then because out of that mountain is going to come forth the grace of God, right? No, no, no. What does this verse say? The law. Gonna, shall go forth the law. They're going to be ruling and reigning with the law because remember the law is going to be written in Israel's where? Hearts. So they're going to be able to keep it. But the rest of these nations, they're going to be ruled according to the law. Mm -hmm. This is why the ten men are going to try to get 
get the garment of him to him that it was due. Exactly. Let's go there. I got, uh, I got a question. Go ahead. Okay, so the Gentiles were not going to have it written on their, on their hearts? No. no. I mean, the Gentiles that, that kind of proselyte? Well, they wouldn't be, yeah, they wouldn't be considered Gentiles. Anybody that proselytizes under Israel's program, they were considered children of Israel. They were proselytes to let you know that they, these were men who were converted from Gentiles. But at that time, yes, they would not be considered, the, uh, uh, a, I guess, Gentiles in the sense of a pagan, a heathen nation. They would be considered. Is this during the tribulation? Yeah, the last days. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Are we still talking about 144? Are we talking no, about. No, the, the 144, that has nothing to do with Gentiles. No, I'm talking about as far as the ones written on their hearts. Yeah, the, yeah, the 144 will have a seal written on their foreheads. Revelation 7. They're going to have a seal written on their foreheads. Because remember now, the covenant is not going to come until Christ comes back. The covenant does not start during the tribulation. The 144 will be preaching during the tribulation. Right. 144,000. Yes. That's a, yeah, that's Revelation 7. They're going to be preaching. They're going to have a seal on their head. Now, they won't know, but God will. Okay. I think he's saying who would be giving out the law then that they've flown up to Zion? Who will be that? Who, who will be that? <laughs> Just the whole Jewish nation, but what will be left of it, the remnant? You mean after the tribulation or during? Right, after. After the tribulation, it will be Israel. All Israel shall be saved. Right? When Paul talks in Romans 11, he says that right now that they're blinded until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And it says, there shall come a deliverer out of Zion. And that, that is my covenant unto Israel when I will take away their sins. That comes after the tribulation. Then all of those in Israel who believe, which will include the 144,000, they will be sealed. Uh, they will have the new covenant written on their hearts at that time. Okay. And there will be no need for them to teach one another. Okay. Right. So uh, nobody else. Uh, nobody else. So he was asking, if you make it through that tribulation period and you proselytize then, then there's no difference once you make it through Yeah, no, no, there won't be any proselytizing then. That's what you're talking about? Yeah, because... Uh, I'm lost. Yeah. You Gentiles <laughs> still have to go through... But they, but they won't, they won't be any proselytes. Now remember now, proselytes back here accepted Judaism. Right. Out here, there's gonna be no change. Your mind. change. There's not, yeah, there's not gonna be no. Uh, there's not gonna be any. We're Israel today. They're gonna be still considered nations being ruled according to Israel. That's right. Okay. There's no more chance to be in Israel at this okay. point. They ain't got no. Okay. You see that? But there is a chance for them to know the God of Israel. After the tribulation. After the tribulation. Once the covenant starts, remember there's a thousand year reign. In the thousand year reign, the Gentiles will have to get the skirt of a Jew and go up to the mountain and they will be ruled according to the law. So they will say, listen, this is the law, this is what you need to keep. They're still auditioning. Right, that's the, because remember now, there won't be any satanic influence. In that thousand year reign, he will be bound for a thousand years. Revelation 20. He will be bound for a thousand years. So the Gentiles or any other nations outside of Israel in the millennial kingdom will be ruled by Israel according to the law. So there's, no, there's not going to be say, hey, I want to proselytize at this point and be Israel. No, they're going to be ruled. Just like you have... Uh, 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 Trying to give but, a natural example. But if the law is the law, uh -huh. okay, and they're in a thousand years, mm -hmm. and they can't because they have not Jews or they haven't proselytized the Jews, uh -huh. they uh -huh. are now Gentiles who now have to keep the law, not by, so, but you can't keep the law, according to what we understand. Now you can't keep the they law. They can't keep the law. Even, even if there's no Satan, you still can't keep the law. They can't keep the law. So again, what happens here during this time when they can't keep the law, they're going to be ruled by the law. So they're going to know that when they made a mistake at that time. Because remember now, there'll still be offerings back here. Oh, gotcha, okay. See, there'll still be sacrifices. Exactly. Okay, so so, so the sacrifices will be back. Yeah, back here. And that's how they're going to be ruled. And they're going to have to listen to it. Basically, all of this that happened back here is going to happen again, but for the nations now. Gotcha. Not for Israel because they won't need it. They won't need it. Oh. The nations. Huh? Everybody, outside of, Everybody outside of Israel. So outside of Israel. what Israel went through back here 
was for them to become a kingdom of priests. Mm -hmm. Once the new covenant comes, they, they will be that kingdom yeah. of priests. Oh. The channel of so, na the channel so now they're going to the Gentiles who had not the law back here, mm -hmm. going to be doing what Israel did over here. So. That's when Israel is going to have to go out, preach to all the to every creature, great commission. the Great Commission, great commission. Yeah. right? That's when they're going to have to go out. Mm -hmm. Because remember, when people talk about the Great Commission that's going on today, well, I'll get to them if we ever get back to Hebrews. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. No, no, no. Okay, so you're saying that through Jerusalem or through Israel, the Gentile nations that are left, uh huh. We have to go through Jerusalem, but since they're going by the law, how can they be saved by keeping the law? By, by keeping, who can keep the law? The obedience, the right they can, they, they're they're the obedience to the law. Yeah. Obedience to the law. Yeah. There's, there's going to be obedience, just like here. Everything that happened here is going to happen here. Just different people. The same way these. The same way these. Remember the patriarchs, though. The same way they kept it. Yeah. How did they keep it back here? Okay, so over here, that's what the Gentiles are going to have to do. And it won't be Satan's influence neither. Won't yeah, be. I hear that, but I'm going like the ultimate sacrifice already been made. For Israel. For Israel. But some of the people weren't even born. Right? For Israel. But yeah, these people, you're, you're thinking about these people as you and I today. They're not born. These people won't know what's going on. They're going to have to be taught everything. You got to remember the only people that's going to know is the people who have it written in their hearts. Okay. okay. Everybody else won't have a clue of what you're talking about right now. Okay. Okay. You're okay. talking because you have a knowledge of what's going on, <laughs> which is the problem most of the time. It's good because that's the problem most of the times because with people today they anticipate revelation, revelation. which yeah. means they read back in the Old Testament what we know now. They didn't know that back then. Amen. That's why it was written. That's why Paul says, Romans 15 and 4, for the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning. That's why we need the whole Bible to understand things. Because remember, Isaiah is prophesying now about something that was to come. We haven't even seen the day that Isaiah is talking about. Nor are we going to because we're going to be raptured up. But it has not happened yet. So this is a prophecy explaining the last days. Because remember that that was the point of me going here. The writer in Hebrews is picking up from the last days of prophecy. Okay. Right? So that was the point of me going to Acts because the last days for them would have been right around the Acts 1 to Acts 7 or Acts 9 when Paul gets saved. So remember now, that would have been their last days. Hebrews would have been written sometime around there. Okay. So we because the, the temple was still up when Hebrews was written and all of that was still up. Right? So understand that that doctrine was written for them to go through these things and understand certain things, which is why the doctrine in Hebrews, they could willfully sin and fall away. Yeah. You see that? That's Hebrews 10. We'll so, get to uh, all of that. So actually what we could take our, our, our map up here and just fold it back. Uh -huh. Like we usually do. And fold yeah. It back that would, exactly. So Hebrews like would have been written. And the whole point, let's go back to Hebrews 1. <laughs> So now remember, this would this is what would have happened. So once this happened, they would have had needed books to know what to do to go through this. So Hebrews to Revelation, which most people think was written so far down the line, would have needed to be written during the time that these apostles were living to write them. You see that? So they would have been written here. Uh, uh, so Hebrews, in that time, Hebrews, uh, uh, Acts 1 to 10, 9 when, when Paul gets saved, but Acts 8, 9 to 10 pretty much happened all at the same time. So they would have needed Hebrews. They would have needed uh, 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 James and all those books to, uh, and Revelation. They would have needed to know what to do out here. Right. Okay, that's because had they not had those books, they would not have known. Because remember, those books pick up at the time where Acts 2 lays off. So if they would have accepted right. the Lord, we wouldn't have been going through it. They would have yeah. gone into the tribulation? Exactly. I don't with, know, I don't, okay, with, 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 they would have been going through the tribulation with understanding. Because remember now, in order to get the kingdom, there has to first be wrath. Right. That's the only way they can get the kingdom. The only way they were to get the kingdom is there first has to be wrath. The wrath of God is associated with their kingdom. Mm 
Which is why we're saved from the wrath to come. Because it has nothing to do with our program. Their kingdom, they have to have wrath first. Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. Right? Jeremiah 30 and 7. Right? Uh -huh. With the 144,000, is that during the tribulation? That's during the tribulation. I mean, yes. They joined the rest of them in the king, in the, uh, kingdom. They, they, yeah, they would have. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they would have. And, and, and again, because it didn't happen, they would have probably been a part of that. You see, they, because remember, the apostles now would, would, are going to—they're going to be rulers even over the hundred and forty-four. Right. They're going to judge the twelve tribes of Israel, sitting, sitting on, on twelve thrones. thrones. So remember now, Peter knows they would have been judging the rest of them. So they would, you know. So even then, it wouldn't have been a mixture of the hundred and forty-four because they would have been over them. Now, the people who were living that were in Israel, who were added to the church and all that. They probably would have been counted in that 144. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the, but the 12 are not counted in the 144. And they probably wouldn't even know they were a part of it until it was yeah, time. Yeah, nobody's going to know. Because even in Revelation 7, it says this, God will place a seal on their head. But the he's the only one that's going to know. The 12 aren't virgins anyway. Huh? Yeah, because 144, yeah, as we yeah. went through the last time, yeah. had to be virgins and everything. Yeah, yeah. Peter had a wife. Yeah, so, yeah, Peter had a wife, so he that he's excluded. <laughs> so, so, uh... Yeah, so so that so that's what would have happened now. So the, yeah, so don't confuse the twelve with the hundred and forty-four, because what were the twelve? Where were they from? Galilee. They were from Galilee. Okay. They weren't Levites. Exactly. That's they weren't from the Levitical yeah. priesthood. So so understand that. We, so are we kind of clear on that? Yeah, I have to. I I'll probably have to write an email. Have to, I told you <laughs> yeah. should have had this stuff written down. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll write an email to clear it up for you guys. So, so if Israel would have accepted in that day, it would have went from Acts. The next book would have been Hebrews. Yeah, yeah, because there would have been no need for Paul's epistles at that time. Paul got in trouble. But see, what I didn't get was they. Have and a lot of their writings probably would have been different because remember, Peter wrote about Paul yeah. to say it was hard to understand, so he probably wouldn't have had need to write that. But they do have to go through the tribulation. Time. Yeah, they do. Israel, to get their kingdom, has to go through a time of testing, a tribulation. Oh, God. That's Jacob's trouble. Oh, They're going to have to have a national day of repentance. They're going to have to have a national day of atonement. That's all for them. All of that stuff we receive already. Okay? So, so... <laughs> what they're going to have to go through is for that seven years of tribulation? Yes. So they're going to go through and they're going to come out okay then? No. When you say come out okay, what do you mean by that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> because you know because they're gonna come, they're gonna come out okay. In the, they're gonna come out okay in the sense of they'll be with God because a lot of them are gonna get martyred. So that's why I said, what do you mean by okay? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to find out. What it, what it there are a lot of them that are going to get martyred, which means they're gonna die for the cause of Christ. So they're gonna be okay. But that's what I said. In what sense are we talking about? Oh, they're going to have to die. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. <laughs> so, so, some, so some are going to die and some are going to come out. Alive. Yes, okay. yeah, some are going to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. But those, like you say, even those that die, if they're martyrs, it's going to be okay because they're going to exactly. be exactly. with him. Because remember now, once, once this happens, it was seven years before Jesus would have returned. That's why Jesus said, there will be some of you still standing when the Son of Man returns. You see that? Matthew 10. So they, it would have been some of them that he preached to still standing because it would have only been seven years. You see that? Now, remember... You, you ought to see some of the people that don't accept the interruption to try to explain that verse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> because technically he would have been lying. Because there ain't nobody that was living back then that's living today. You know, so technically those verses are dispensational verses. You see what I mean? So, and understand this. Jesus started his ministry at what age? 33. 33, 33 right? Now, he's well, technically died at 33. He started at 30. Okay? In Israel, in, in Israel, a Jew or a priest of Israel starts their ministry at 30. Right? They have a ministry for 20 years. Right? And then once they're 50, then that's it with their ministry. Mm -hmm. Jesus, if you look at the numbers, he died at, 20, at uh, 33. 33. So his ministry would have gone to 50, and then it was really, and he gave them an extra year. 
because in the in the I don't want to get too deep, but in the in the calendar of of Daniel, it's 490 years. Remember we went over that. When he died, it was a it was room left to give them an extra year. So after the 21 years, seven, which is the number of spiritual perfection, times three, which is the number of spiritual completion, he would have returned. And those that were still standing there would have made it through the tribulation. You see that? So, yeah, so it, it, it's, it's, it's deep. Yeah. Yeah, I'll write up an email. I'm going to have to write up an email. But, uh, but, but understand, and uh, dang, all of that because I'm trying to show you the last days. <laughs> yeah, y'all asked for Hebrews, so y'all asked for it. Listen, even though uh, Israel doesn't have a uh, heavenly inheritance, some of those souls are seen in heaven. For uh, Sister Hobbs, some of those souls are seen in heaven that get martyred in that day. Yeah, because that will be their resting place. Yeah, yeah. So they come back to earth. Yeah, so that's why I said in a totality, eternity sense, even those people who get martyred will be okay. Mm -hmm. The 144, they have a seal of God. Whether they die or not, they're sealed. They have a seal of God. What's our seal today? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 1.13. He seals us with the Holy Spirit of what? Promise for the earnest of our inheritance. So we're okay. That's how we know whether we die or not, we're okay. You see that? Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Because who can break that seal? Nobody. So even 144, they're sealed in their foreheads by God. So nobody can break that. Even if they die, they're going to be okay. That's why I said, what sense now? Because some of them are going to have to die. You see that? So, so, but they're going to be okay because they have a seal of God. Amen. The seal of God cannot be broken. That's why we receive eternal life as a present possession. Because we've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Mm -hmm. Now, the sealings may be different. There's a circumcision. Mm -hmm. Today, Paul says that promise you nothing. But we are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Mm -hmm. By the spirit, by the heart. Amen. Okay? Amen. Now, Hebrews 1 and 1. <laughs> one verse. How about, how, 20 minutes, one verse. <laughs> uh, okay, now, verse verse 2. So, it had in the last days spoken unto us by his who? Now, now I'm not going to go to this verse for time's sake, but you can write these down. Deuteronomy 21 17 talks about the inheritance, okay? In Israel, the firstborn son. Got the and well, well, he actually got a double portion. All of the sons were heirs who received the inheritance or a portion. But the firstborn, firstborn was the one who received a double portion. That's why when people say today, oh God, give me a double portion of your anointing and all this nonsense. That's what they get that from. Okay. So, 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 but that's what people uh, uh, pray for, right? So now, uh, Hebrews one and verse two had in these last days. Spoken unto us by his son, whom he had appointed, what? Heir. Heir of what? All, All things. things, by whom also he made the what? Worlds. He made the worlds, right? There was a certain appointment, right? Now. Man, look at that S, man. Uh, worlds. All right, let's go there, because we, we, we're going to take time to go through this book. So let's go back to Matthew 21 real quick. Because notice he's going to make him heir of all things. And he was also appointed to do this, right? He also made the worlds. <laughs> That's what we get that word. Leave you alone till next With time. An S on on it, huh? uh, what's that? With an S on it, huh? Yeah, wor and and worlds there, which means that, and we're gonna go through some. We'll go through the verses. Uh, bear with me. I said I'm gonna have to start saying at at about twelve. For those who want to leave, service is over. But for those who want to stay, then you can stay and hear the conclusion of the matter. Because I know I don't, y'all know I don't like to hold y'all too long. <laughs> See, but this is what this is what church is supposed to be. See, it, it, it gets so good to you ain't want you ain't thinking about the time. You don't want to leave, but I'm thinking about it because I don't want y'all to be thinking about it. You just want to check and see if you got an email. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, get my phone. Yeah, because <laughs> I, yeah, I forgot I'm on call for my wife. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Matthew 21, and she'll probably call one of y'all, too, so. <laughs> so yeah. But, uh, 
Yeah, I'm supposed to go do a chaplain service for my, one of my wife's patients, so uh, I'm on call. But uh, uh, Matthew 21. Go to Matthew 21. Appreciate it. All right, I'm good. Matthew 21, look at verse 33. Because we're talking about God appointing his son to something. But watch how this parable plays out. Matthew 21, 33. We have it? Yes. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a what? Vineyard. Who's the householder? Oh. Who's the vineyard? Israel. Okay, Woo. okay. I hear you. <laughs> and he hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a what? Tower. Tower in religious. religious system, okay? And let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. What, who's the husbandman? Huh? Nah, you the, the, yeah, you can say that. Or the prophets. The, the, the prophets or the priests, really the Pharisees and the scribes at that time, the leaders of Israel. So the husbandman would have been the leader. So the vineyard is Israel. Uh, uh, the household is God himself or Christ himself. Uh, uh, we, 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 the, it will be Christ here. The husbandman is the leaders of Israel. And then it and went into a what? Heaven. Far country. Which would be heaven. Okay? So we got that. Right. Verse 34. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants, which would have been who? Twelve prophets. The prophets. Oh, right? Because remember now in Hebrews 1, it was spoken unto the fathers by who? The by prophets. the prophets. Okay? And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants of prophets to the who? Husband. Right? Leader. Which would be what? Pharisees. The religious leaders of that time. Okay? They, that they might receive the fruits of it. Because remember when Jesus said to the Pharisees, the kingdom is in you. And he said, I'm going to take the kingdom out of you and give it to a nation bringing forth the fruit. Mm -hmm. so, he's, so he's talking to them, I'm going to bring a people out of you, which was the little flock, mm -hmm. because they will be the ones bringing forth fruit. Not all of Israel are going to bring forth the fruit, okay? okay. Now, verse 35, and the husbandmen, the leaders, took his prophets or servants and did what? Beat one. Beat one and killed another and stoned another, which that's what the prophets went through, mm -hmm. right? Verse 36, again, he sent other servants more than the first. Mm -hmm. So when they killed all of these back here, these prophets here, he sent more. Mm -hmm. Same thing. And they did unto them what? Likewise. Likewise. Did the be, same thing to them. Would those be the minor prophets? <laughs> the minor and major prophets, right? But all of them got the same faith. But last of all, he sent unto them his what? Son. Which of you? Jesus. Jesus. Saying they will reverence my what? Son. So even though they kill the prophets who I'm giving them to prophesy about my son, they should have, they, they definitely got to receive my son. Let's see what they're going to receive him. Verse 38, but when the husbandmen, the leaders of Israel, saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the what? Heir. Heir. Now, in Hebrews, we just saw that he appointed him to be what? Heir of what? All things. So they recognized it, right? Now, what they should have said, this is the heir. Let us repent. And what did they do? Come, let us do what? Kill him. And let us seize on his inheritance. Because if we kill him, we get the inheritance. Jesus. Right? Because now remember the son gets the firstborn, gets the what? The double portion. But if they kill him, they're thinking that we'll get that. Jesus. Look at verse 39. And they caught him and cast him out of the what? Vineyard. And did what? Slew him. When the Lord therefore of the bank of the vineyard coming, what will he do unto those husbandmen? Mm -mm -mm. Verse 30, uh, 41, they say unto him, he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard, Israel, unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their what? Season. So that's when they're going to go to all nations, preaching the gospel to every creature, right? Because they're going to bring forth the fruit thereof. Jesus said unto them, did ye never read the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? Oh, this is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Mm. 
these, these husbandmen, these religious leaders, and give it to a nation, the little flock, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be what? Broken. But on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. Wow. And the chief priests and Pharisees, look at them, heard his parables, they perceived that he what? Yeah, you think? <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, he was talking about y'all. Right? But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. There you go. Because remember that he said that prophet that I will send, that prophet he must hear. You see that? They, and they said they cast him out the vineyard. Yep. And they, so they, they took him out of Israel, yep. out of Jerusalem, and put him on the, on the, on the cross. There you the go, cross. the Roman cross. Jesus. Outside the city. Outside the city. Outside Ain't the city. that something? Yeah. Yep. Because remember now, Daniel prophesied about this, uh, Daniel 9, 27, that the Messiah would be cut off. Mm -hmm. Remember? See, all of these scriptures go together. It's exciting to me. I mean, I'll write it down for you so you can get as excited. So you can get the verses and put them together. But it's in my mind, I'm going right now. So it's all coming together. But look at that. And, and I won't go there. But actually, this is a quote from Isaiah 5. Uh, let's go there. Let's go there real quick. Go to Isaiah 5 real quick. <laughs> Look at uh, Isaiah 5. We'll start at verse 1. Now I will sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My well beloved had a, vine, a vineyard in a very fruitful what? And, and he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth what? Wow. And now, O oh, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my what? Vineyard. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth what? Wow. Wow. Wild grapes. Now, if you continue reading, it's going to talk about the vineyard. And all of these things talk about Hebrews because it's being spoken of by his son, which at that time he was going to appoint heir of all things, mm -hmm. right? And he says he was going to also be made, uh, uh, who also made the worlds. Go back to Hebrews 1. 